finish getting the rest of this stuff on to this engine today. At least get it set up so that we can uh, start checking and setting the valve lash on the new cams and sealing the bottom side of the engine up with a dry sump kit. Here we are looking into the bottom of the engine and this is where the dry sump is gonna go. I got a couple of uh, gaskets here and stuff. But the Bison kit does come with an O-ring for the pump. So I'm probably going to do just a very, very light coating of uh, Black Art TV on the, uh, the O-ring just to kind of keep the seal there just in case there's any imperfections. And uh, we'll start with that fancy spot first. Super excited to get this thing on. Super excited to... Uh, um, I don't know, have a dry sump, my first dry sump engine ever. <laughs> a lot of challenges ahead. We're trying to make it all work. Um, and flat iron tuning has been discovered. But um, at the bare minimum, we'll give this thing a little wipe down, make sure everything looks good. Lay down a real thin, we'll get everything set up. I'll go over the instructions and um, we'll see how this goes. Next, I'm going to install this absolutely gorgeous piece here, and this is going to be our oil pump block off. I mean, isn't that just gorgeous? Get this thing on and then uh, move on to the next thing. Now we need to install this oil line that goes from here, which I believe it goes from here to here. So let me see what we got in the kit here. The stuff. Here um, the instructions, which are should always be taken kind of uh, kind of lightly, but uh, um, instructions are definitely a little light on the installation progress. So here's our line. Let me see if, uh, uh, let's see what this thing says. I'm pretty sure that's where it's supposed to go, though. That's actually the feed. This is oil engine pressure over here. See, I don't need any instructions. So that's one line there. Let's see, I think it needs to go like this. Let me see if it went like this. Yeah. Now these are aluminum fittings, which I'm not personally a fan of, but it's pretty much uh, the gold standard in uh, in uh, automotive AM fittings. Kind of come from uh, steel fittings myself. And now, I believe, without knowing any better, this fit in here. Is for the um, uh, question is should I run my oil cooler plate or not? Originally, I wasn't going to, um, mostly because I was going to repurpose my oil cooler for my trans for the transmission. Let's see, I believe this is going to go here. And it does. We need to make sure we snug that little bad chicken down. No idea what it needs to be torqued to. So we'll just get it snug. Do 
Do smaller. this down. If it is aluminum going into aluminum, so I don't want to get too too crazy after it. We'll just work with that. Super careful not to cross thread these things because of the uh, uh, them being aluminum. You'd have a bad day. You'd have a bad day. Sure somebody in the home's cringing. Why aren't you using the fancy AN fittings? AN fitting wrenches. I'm not necessarily concerned about scratching the finish on these things. More concerned about making sure that they're tightened at tightened point and good. Alright, there we go. So that's our feed line installed. Let's see what else did they give us here. They gave us this piece in case we're not going to run the oil cooler line, which we're not, at least for right now. And this is super baller. Keith actually gave me kind of like a care package, depending on which direction I end up going with the engine, that had this. But I mean, how are you not going to install this beautiful um, AN piece there? I don't normally like to do this, but I really don't like this thing to leak either. I'm just going to put a dab of silicone on these threads and by a dab I mean way too much and I have to use the rag to wipe it off yeah, way too much now this is um, blocking a coolant port so we don't want our coolant system to get plugged up but certainly not nearly as critical as your uh, uh, oil system so when you watch me and maybe you did or not but when I put on the uh, sealant on that front timing or that front oil pump cover is really careful to uh, um, make sure that there's enough room for the like the squeeze out of the uh, of the uh, remember those things are called? See if you even have a size big enough for this thing. I know. That's pretty darn big. Oops. That's 14. This will do it. Bam, look at that. Just get this snug. I'm sure this has a torch spec. to keep in mind there two pieces of aluminum. It does have a sealing washer on it and it's got a little bit of silicone on it as well. Um, the next part of our care package um, for Marka Clark Motorsports is the block off. Well, not the block off, but the, the short oil filter nose. Okay. 
Also something that Keith gave me, kind of gave me the, the two different variants there. And make sure that that's good and snug. I'm not exactly sure what size it is. Let's see how close this one inch is. All right, so it might be about 24 millimeter. And it is, and I'm just gonna look at the torque real quick. Like these things, I wouldn't say loosen up on me, but that it definitely have gotten looser. There's 20 foot pounds right there. Okay, after consulting the uh, internet gods, it turns out it's 40 foot pounds. There it is, 40 foot pounds. One last part for a little hair package here. Look at that. A little Roger Clark race filter. Okay, so here we're looking at two water pumps. This is the one that I just ordered with the factory Subaru part number there from Flatirons. And this is the water pump that came with the RCM kit. So a couple of things I wanna point out is how this one says Yamada right here. I'm not exactly sure that that means anything. And then you've got these little casting numbers on the outside, whereas this one just says Japan here. Doesn't say anything in there. And then there's no casting numbers on the side. So that's the first thing that I notice. Um, you can see that it says Japan here. And you can see that pretty much other than then those casting marks, those are the only casting mark differences. Now, I'm gonna talk about this thing. So this is the webbing right here. I wish I had something to point with. Uh, the webbing that's on the um, RC, or the pump that comes with the RCM pump. Now, this bolt here is gonna be taking a lot of extra stress because it's gonna be driving not only the idler, the cog idler, but it's also gonna be driving the cog for the, um, the dry sump. So I want to I want to look at all the supports there. So you can see kind of the thickness of the supports, and you see how that's got a stepped stepped one. So now when we come over here and look at it, you can see that these two are about the same. And instead of this one being stepped, it's all thick all the way through. I'm not sure if that's. I mean, I would think that would be good. I'm not sure if that's good or not. But there is one other key difference, and this is actually what caught my eye. So on the back side of this pump, that's a cast steel impeller, okay? On the back of this pump is a stamped steel impeller. Now, I'm not a um, pro on any of this stuff Subaru, but what I have read is that I have seen where these cast impellers have been, or these stamped steel impellers have been known to aerate and create heating issues with the uh, Subaru engines. Another thing, so it's really common that people want these cast impellers. You can see that in every single way, these things are exactly the same with the exception of some of those casting differences that I pointed out. One of my worries is that this pump was on an engine that basically came to an abrupt halt. So I'm worried about the integrity of, of that little spot right there. However, I'm also equally as worried about the quality of the pump and stuff itself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean this pump up. We're gonna take that one back to flat irons and we're gonna run the pump that essentially came with the kit and hope for the best. All right, there we go. Now we've got this thing all cleaned up and ready to go. Everything else looks pretty good. I did throw the bolt into here to make sure that it wasn't um, wasn't broken or cracked and I looked at it pretty close and inspected it and um, everything looks like it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and um, get all my stuff set up 
And uh, we're gonna throw this pump on and a handful of other little assortments step. All right, so we got the water pump on, torqued down. I just torqued it down to seven foot pounds. I'm just gonna double check online and make sure that's right, but uh, probably give it another quick torque. Uh, we've got this little guy on, which is super fancy, just the oil plug. So on the flat irons car, they were gonna run there off of the breather there, the vacuum brake. But I think I'm gonna try and run my vacuum brake off of this spot right here. So figure we'll get something to work with that. And uh, got the front main seal on. And I think that's uh, I think that's it. I think what we'll probably do next is flip the engine on the side and lubricate and drop in some of these cans. So we reached the end of the day and we got everything off the table with the exception of maybe my alternate relocation kit and a few gaskets and onto the engine. Um, the set that we installed today was the Roger Clark Motorsport Dry Sump Kit and with that came typically a water pump, it comes with this front um, cover, it, has, it comes with the seal, it comes with the hardware to install the oil, pan, oil pump delete comes with um, a cover back here uh, that blocks off the original fill since you'll be filling up through the dry sump tank. It also comes with the pressure line, uh, the race filter, and the block off plate and the nub in case that you're running um, the factory water to air cooler or water to oil, oil cooler. And the water pump also does not have the nib. Now we've had um, Flat irons installed, you reuse their old water pump with the had the cooler and had the nib, and it's really tight up against here. So you definitely want to use the, uh, the factory or this style water pump when you're installing the kit because of the tolerances. We also installed the GSC stage two cans, even though we still need to get all the measurements for it and the buckets and stuff. That's why you haven't seen me actually seal up or like we don't have these uh, covers on the inside and stuff yet either. So we haven't seen any of that stuff actually installed yet because the, uh, uh, there's still a lot of stuff that we're waiting on. And one of those things is doing the buckets and uh, checking the valve latch. So the buckets that are in there that Keith set up should give us enough room to kind of actually take some measurements. And then from there, uh, get the buckets that we need. Um, nothing looked like it was too tight, like uh, the valves and everything looked like they're going to be fine. We also installed the Roger, uh, Roger Clark Motorsports uh, cam gears uh, for the exhaust side. 
These are adjustable cam gears. A big part of this is so I can get uh, my timing dialed in 100%. And I might actually play a little bit of the center lines, but if we get the, uh, the pieces here that I'm hoping we get, uh, probably we'll have to fine tune the um, uh, cam, cam phasing. So that's why I got adjustable cam gears here. And I'm also going to try and do a little bit of stuff with the intake side, the ABCS side. You can see that I had the gears on, but the gears, I need to actually get the bolts that hold the uh, gears on. Um, obviously, the factory bolts to hold the old style on, which I have a bunch of, um, don't actually fit inside here. And I believe, I'll have to dig them out, but I believe I have the covers. So we'll get the BMW moved and get those out. Um, Something, uh, we also installed the Tomei Equal Length header. It's the same header that I've had forever. I love it. Um, it's still wrapped. The wrap is definitely seeing better days, but we doubled up. We used two gram speed exhaust manifold gaskets. And the biggest reason was to make sure that there's adequate room here because it's a little bit snug in there. Right now I can get my finger through there, but that's without a belt on it. Uh, I copper coated everything and let the copper coat dry to help maintain that seal. I know guys like um, Dewey, Eric, DeWitt have had problems blowing out those seals and putting two of them uh, makes it a little less secure. So hopefully that's not a problem that we have. So I, put, I copper coated everything and torqued those down. I also installed, and this is for my old set, I still need to compress the tensioner and all that stuff, but I'm not in a big rush with that until I get all the timing components. But uh, the Roger Clark Motorsports uh, version two tensioner. And um, this is basically that tensioner I really like that combines the old technology where you have the old style tensioner, which the pencil style that I really like, with this uh, um, extra either that you see in the new style. So uh, other than that, something that you, you didn't see me really install, and mostly it's not even bolted on, I'm actually gonna take it to my friends at my finish and really get this thing coated up. But this is the AMS intake manifold that's built and set up for a front mount orientation. It's also, you probably can't tell, but it's also set up for drive-by um, wire. So we are converting the car over to drive-by wire. Um, I've got a throttle body off of a legacy for it already that does not have the, uh, um, the manifold. Uh, map sensor built that, so we'll be running an external map sensor with whatever ECM style that we go with. I also have a Forester one that does have the map sensor built in, so we do have options in case I end up running on a stock ECU to get this thing going. Other than that, I believe everything that we've installed on the motor is everything that you see. I'll put links down in the description, just like I did with the last video for all the parts here that I talked about and uh, check out my uh, sponsors, Flatirons Tooting, who does, who supplied a big chunk of the, I say supplied, but who I bought a lot of these parts from. And, um, and then stay tuned. I think it'll probably be a while before we do another build me or a post for the, uh, the engine, but uh, we'll take this and drop it off my finish and look for updates on that.